In the Philippines, there are Americans who live there. They are called expats. This is their story. They vacated. Yeah, they have to rejudicate the whole thing. Want to read it? In a little bit. Right here. He emphasized on service can non-service. Oh yeah. So the Vietnam War, Vietnam National Guard men are considered active duty. That's why I tried to tell that meathead up there, Percy. You can't grade National Guard right now because the Pentagon activated them all. Oh, I guess you're... Hey, I was trying to place an order on my server and all. Uh, uh, server was waiting for me to come. I'm with Vasco's Media. Action. All right, my name is George Bradford Patterson. Second. I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I lived in southwest Germantown, Philadelphia, on Apsley Street, almost on the corner of Apsley and Pulaski Street. Pulaski is the name of the Polish general who fought in the American Revolution. I got my master's degree in 19, May of 1982 at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, in teaching English as a second language. I did my undergraduate degree in Spanish, no, no, in religion at Temple University in 19, January of 1974. Uh, I did another major later on after I had gotten my undergraduate degree in, in Spanish, in fluent in Spanish. I lived in Latin America. I talked for four years in Latin America. I came to the Philippines the first time in 1990. In the summer of 1990, in July, on vacation from Korea, just to see what it was like because I had heard so much about it. I was in the Philippines for about four weeks, five weeks, uh, whatever, just for a brief visit for vacation. Um, I, I stayed in the Swagman Hotel in Manila, and then took a bus, or uh, uh, took a, I took their their shuttle bus up to the Swagman Hotel branch in Angeles City. And stayed there a few days, and then I took a, I took a tour. I arranged, I arranged to go up to their other branch in Baguio, and then I took a tour throughout northern Luzon. I went, I went with my driver's tour, a driver and a tour guide. We went all the way up to uh, the rice terraces of Banawe in the area of the Ipugaos, uh, place up in the Cordillera, at Shana Mountains. And then we drove all the way through Nueva Ecija and other parts of Luzon to what is known as uh, Alaminos, where they have the Hundred Islands in in Pangasinan, and then they drove me back to my hotel in Baguio at the Swagman Hotel branch. Why did, George, why did you decide to stay here? Initially I, 
I came here to, to get my PhD in language education and to finish a novel that I had started, which is still unfinished, called The Mystical House, but I'm going to change it to The Mystical Quest. That's, but the primary reason for coming here was to get my PhD in language education. And how's that going? Well, now I'm in the middle, I'm more than halfway through on my data analysis and transcription for my dissertation, which is turn-taking in English and small group discussions. It's discourse analysis and sociolinguistics for the purpose of improving language teaching and learning and intercultural communication. Well, those are the main purposes of it. What's your impression of the Philippine culture? It is a rich hybrid of various cultural strains of Chinese influence, a, uh, a Western influence such as North American influence, and some of the European influences, and the indigenous cultures, which is William Henry Scott wrote in pre Hispanic source history of the Philippines. Uh, is very rare, rich with many, many different ethnic uh, groups. We're very, very, very varied, variegated, uh, multicultural society, and multiracial and multilinguistic, with, with similarities and dissimilarities between the different languages in this country. Mm -hmm. And as far as that, how do you feel about Philippine politics? You don't have to answer that question. No, if you don't I'll answer it. I think there's a lot of corruption, like you find in a lot of developing countries in the third world. It, it is, it is, it is, it is obstructed them in their socio-economic development and to provide justice and really true grassroots justice and fundamental social change. It's a part of the cycle of poverty and injustice and corruption and inequality that you find in a lot of developing countries that I experienced in, uh, during my stays in various Latin American countries and in Bangladesh and India. So what do you think about the government as it is today and your and how it affects your lifestyle? Well, it doesn't affect me individually. <laughs> per se, except I've experienced some of the corruption in this country in terms of... Give me an example. Well, uh, an Astafi case I had, where I'm quite certain that there was corruption involved in the decision because, of, because we had the evidence. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about the book? Yes. Talk about the book more. This is the, book, the novel that I started writing in which it actually was put out. We had a book launching, which you put it out without having a proofreading done. And we made a demand letter asking her to, she was to print it again with a clean copy, it's the 500, and she refused and saying she would only do 200, and we made a settlement where she would print 200, but she violated the settlement by saying that I would have to pay for the 200 copies. And then later, we got proof that she actually had sold 10 copies. I had the receipt for one of the copies that I bought. And it was admitted by the store, the manager of Tradewinds Bookstore, that these 10 copies were sold. And she denied it, but later admitted it in her affidavit, but said she didn't benefit from it. And they made a decision to dismiss the case, in which we, my lawyer strongly suspected there was something underhanded in terms of a bribe, but it's very hard to prove, because we had, really we had solid evidence, not airtight, but enough to get a conviction. And then we got evidence later on that she actually, she claimed that she did not benefit from it, but we got evidence that she actually received the money from the sale of the book she lied in her, in her affidavit. She actually did receive money because we saw 
the invoice and about the bank check, the bank no, the number the bank check in which she had received money for them, and she act, she secretly overprinted by fifteen hundred. And the contract called for five hundred. Okay. And you have a copy of that contract with you? Yes, I have it. My lawyer has a copy all everything. Okay. My new lawyers. Okay, so how long have you lived here for? Ten years. Okay, so you moved here when you were forty three? I moved I moved here for good when I was forty six. Forty six. And you lived mainly where? Here on campus, but before I was living uh, in uh, Barangay Carino. Mm -hmm. San province. Projects I can't remember exactly. Oh, oh, it's uh, Quezon City. In near Camias, I think it's Project Two. Near Camias, oh, Project Two. Oh. And then I lived also on near Camias Road and another place in Camias. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've lived here for more than seven years, right on campus in the boarding house. And I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to vulcanize you now. So, Nana, how do you like being married to Warren? Okay. I'm happy. You happy? Or the like this side. Uh-oh, back it. Uh-oh. So well, how long have you been married for? Uh I think uh nineteen ninety two. Nineteen ninety two. So ten years, Tiba? Yeah. Oh. So uh, and it's been hard? Yeah, hard to survive. Yeah. So, are you going to make any plans to uh, do anything better? I hope so. Okay. You're not sure? Well, let's get, we're going to get Warren down here in a second and uh, see some of his pictures and stuff. And, uh, so what kind of hobbies do you have, Nana? Right now, I don't have a hobby, but I'm cleaning the house like that. I love cleaning the house and cleaning the house. Okay. Now, tell me your full name. My, uh, Janet. Nanet, Nanet Allen, right? Yeah. Okay, and uh, your name is Warren Allen, Diva. Oh, no, he don't care. <laughs> no, Warren's, Warren's a natural. Honey, uh, I've been to so many of these things at home. I mean, you, you and his wife think I'm from the Stone Age. No, let's not get into that. We're not. We're not going. There. We're not going there. We don't want to talk about this floor yet. Ain't she nice? Yep. Yep. I do writing for Gloria, which I got upstairs. The president. Yeah, um, Filipino Veterans Association. Cool. This is sex symbol of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> which one? <laughs> Old Bill. Oh, yeah, Bill's cool. Okay. I miss Bill. This man. I got involved for the, the, the campaign of Iraq, you know, I, oh, I, right, I threw yeah. out that thing, but I can't put it on. Okay, that's fine. This is personally signed by the Secretary of State. Oh. Hello. It's personally signed. No, it's smoking first. <laughs> this guy is funny. This is Anthony. That's Prince Impey, yeah. That's your man, Anthony. Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Who made me a legal representative of his department. No. Hey. You know what? Have fun and have Thanksgiving with John. You, this is what you that, need a break. This is what that guy sent me. You know what? You need a break. Hey. Tell me about your relationship with your girlfriend. You mean all of them or my last one or what? Well, how many girlfriends have you had since you've been here? Actually, I'm, I'm thinking, I had actually... Um, 
including one where it's just sort of a fling, five. Flings count. Five girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And did you have any kids? Mm. And I had long-term relationships that lasted no more really than a year. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think the problem was with the uh, relationships not lasting so long? They really weren't viable. Or it revolved around them. Well, at least the first three trying to take advantage. <laughs> Rel relationships based on what they could get out of me. Yeah, they have monetarily. Been. And professionally, or and I, 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 I couldn't do that since my, 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 my absolutely top priority was to finish my dissertation. Right. One, of, one of them, my third girlfriend, actually wanted me to to leave here and uh, go to Hong Kong. Go to Hong Kong and uh, said I could still work on my dissertation, but work in Hong Kong. But that would be I, impossible. How can I do that? And, right. And my advisor, co-advisor, Dr. Chiao, agreed with me. And so did my 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 beloved friend and colleague, Dr. Suzanne Kalbeck, who's assistant professor of teaching English as a second language at Community College of Philadelphia, whom I've known for more than 25 years since 1966. 1976, and uh, and who's a Fulbright scholar, mm. is now married to an Indian from India, and you know I this is thank God I mean they backed me up about not doing that, so that I had I the relationship just went steadily downhill when she realized she couldn't get what she wanted. Her. Right, and that was the last relationship. No, you no, were in? there was. Um, Another one before this brief one, uh -huh. and that lasted for a year. That that was not so much taking advantage. Well, there was that, but also incompatibility. Incompatibility because mm -hmm. she was somewhat unstable. Oh, why? She has some kind of behavioral problem that was caused by the fact that her husband had been jailed and tortured under the Marcos dictatorship, and uh -huh. and she had had been harassed by the government, and it it caused over the years a certain kind of instability mentally in her according to one of her best friends mm -hmm. who's the one of the very few friends that is still sticking with her to the extent that it was uh, destroying friendships and, 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 and affable relationships with other people so what do you Which think? I, I, I could not continue, uh, continue to tolerate because being a foreigner in this country and not having family, uh, it, it, when someone causes this problem for me with other people, it, it puts additional stress on me. I'm already having enough difficulty getting through my dissertation. Mm -hmm. So in order to survive, I, I, I severed with her completely. Mm -hmm. And this was the first relationship, right? No, this second was the fourth of the fifth relationship. What, what happened in the fifth relationship? Well, that's still ongoing, although I haven't seen her lately because I don't have the time because of my dissertation. Right. And I and she's very nice. She's not that well educated like the others, but I get along with her. Mm hmm. Maybe that could be an advantage. Huh? Maybe that could be an advantage. How old is she? Forty-two. Okay. But so there is an educational gap. But she's not nasty and mean the way some of the others are. Uh oh. Why were the others nasty and mean? Well, because they had a hidden agenda. They wanted to get certain advantages mm -hmm. through me. Economic, basically. Do you think they have, the American women also have hidden agendas too? I think American women are much more upfront. You know where you stand with them as a rule. It's true. And I, I think you agree with me on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here, it's more or less the other way around. Not completely. I think it it, it, it depends from, from person to person. This is an Asian culture. Mm. They're more indirect, more subtle. With a Latin American woman, you know exactly where you stand. She pretty much spells it out. Right, yeah. Yeah, but... Uh... I really like that. You know where you stand. I mean... They don't like something. They let you know. Here, they, I don't think they do that. Mm -hmm. That's no. what they say. The Filipino culture is very similar. 
on the whole with Latin American culture, that isn't so. There's similarities, but it's not. It's Asian. Exactly. There are some similarities. Mm -hmm. Because of the Spanish colonization, but in Latin America is a different reality. Yeah. And it's different from one country to another in Latin America. Some are more European than others. Right, Even like, different within the in, in the country, like in Colombia. So, is this the only other country that you've lived in for a long-term basis? No, I lived in Korea for seven years. I was teaching English as a foreign language, mostly in Korean universities. Mm -hmm. well, what happened there? I had to leave. Apparently, there were problems in uh, extending my. <coughs> My teaching there, which we have to do from year to year with the Korean immigration, because I had taught in, in a language institute which was on campus, and apparently that was violating my visa status, but my department, being stupid, did mm -hmm. not realize that it was their fault. And so the immigration, although initially they made me pay a fine, later they decided not to extend my, my residence certificate. Right, so you decided to come to the Philippines then? Well, it was a blessing in disguise because of the xenophobia in Korea, mm -hmm. in which they hate foreigners. All right. Because of their having been a hermit kingdom, it was it was good that I got out. It was it was starting to put a lot of stress on me to the extent where I had angina, and if I stayed there, maybe I would have died. Or it was much it was it was great that I got out. Actually, despite problems here in the Philippines with the corruption, the Filipinos are very amiable. They're the opposite of Koreans. Koreans are very closed, very xenophobic, very insular. Mm -hmm. Very, they have this cultural racism. And though that does exist here, it's not overwhelming and awful like in Korea. No. And, 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 and despite the, the, my economic situation, because of having lost money here, is has made it more difficult. It's much nicer to be here than to be in a place like Korea, or I, I understand even Japan. Oh yeah. Which were basically, if you're a foreigner, you're a non-person in Korea. And I understand in Japan, although they're not crude in their racism like in Korea, but you still are a gaijin and one will always be. You're not Japanese. Right. And the same thing in Korea. You're you're a leguk, you're, you're, which means foreigner. You're sangnom, which means in English, non-person. Right. And all one will always be, which is the way I was treated by my department after they took me out with them to a restaurant two or three times at Chungbuk National University. After that, they just acted like I didn't exist, where foreigners are invisible. So how come? It, how, I just want to want to know how come you didn't stay in Pampanga with the American community? Because I got a job here. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, I'm no because I I was I got invented here in the program. What, what's your impression of Pampanga, Balibago? Where is it? This is where Angeles is? Yeah, when you stayed in the Swagman? Well, it basically there's a lot of men there that are just coming there for sex. Or <coughs> sex from Australia or, or whatever. I yeah. Mean, it's a, as a priest, uh, Robert, Father William, I think it's William Frere, Dr. Dr. Frere. Mm -hmm. He's a PhD in, in theology and he's an ordained. Uh, um, American Episcopalian Anglican priest at at St. Mary Seminary at the National Headquarters of the Filipino Anglican Church, which is where the Cathedral of St. Mary and St. John's is. Mm -hmm. He said, when I mentioned I had gone up to the place of the Swagman in Angeles, he said, these, these are the foreigners and the hotels that give the Philippines a bad name because basically the people who go to these places are there to indulge in vices. Yep. I mean vices, mm -hmm. disgusting so you vices. you stayed there for three days. I was there about seven or eight days, I don't know, and then they went, I took a trip up to Baguio and then this tour and then I came back to the Swagman and then from the Swagman I, I went back to prepare at the Swagman in Manila to fly back to Korea. All oh, right. I did yeah. that in 1990. Yeah. And then I, and then I came again for a visit in July, uh, where I stayed at. I stayed at the Swagman briefly, and then I moved up with the help of Dr. Robert Picard, mm -hmm. who's a, who's a retired now retired professor from Ateneo mm -hmm. in English to stay at the uh, Institute of Social Organization or 
uh, the San Antonio where they have a guest house for all right. or and, uh, and other people from around, although also Filipinos who are not at Ateneo to I mean to stay. And I stayed there for another visit What's to, your... to, to, to complete my application or to start my application to get into the PhD program at UP University of the Philippines. And then from there I, I went back to Korea and then I came back for good. What's your impression of the treatment of foreigners? in Ermita compared to the foreigners' treatment in Quezon City? I think foreigners are treated with more respect in Quezon City. Yeah. Could you give me some examples? Well, they basically think that foreigners in Ermita are just foreigners who have to have sex or maybe what, engage in drugs or... Something, yeah. The vices. But Quezon City is a whole different world. Yeah, I believe so. There are a lot of people here for professional reasons or, or they're here to live for good. Mm -hmm. Is that your favorite is this your favorite part of Manila? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. It's nice, it's more culturally diverse. Mm hmm mm. Is, it, is there anything else that you really want to say? Why don't you ask me some questions? Hmm. Okay, so... Do you have any interesting stories about any kind of uh, chaotic experiences that you've had here? Yeah. Could you share them with me? Well, I had experience with the seance in which dwarf spirits speak through her. Right. And I actually was cured of a hiatal hernia by one of these dwarf spirits. That it, it's incredible where she visited me when I was asleep. First time I saw her, but it still wasn't cured. I, and then this, when I spoke to her again, when, when she was speaking through this woman, Lotta Antonio, in Rizal province, mm -hmm. in Montalban, that uh, uh, she said she'd visit me again, and then after that, this problem disappeared. I'd only have to take the tagamet or simitidine, mm -hmm. which kills it, and then the antacids to prevent it. And that was so, really something. So it was like a spiritual healing. Yeah, I actually used my experience with them, and the problem I had with this guy, whom I filed the case against, for violating my human rights, I'm talking about this Eritrean fundamentalist, political, religious, fundamentalist extremist. I, I use it to write a, a short story that I published in the uh, Panorama magazine of the Sunday edition of the Manila Bulletin. It was entitled The Magical Abode. So do you write a lot for papers here? Yeah, I've written mostly poetry, but I've in various magazines, journals, newsletters. I published in a poem in Patmos, the Journal of the Institute for the Study of Asian Church and Culture, which is an international theology journal called the Blossoms at Itza Too. Mm -hmm. I published other poems about peace and justice and love in the form the de now defunct journal, I mean a magazine, the Philippine Graphic mm -hmm. magazine and in the Panorama magazine. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, I, 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 I published in the Panorama magazine uh, two, two short stories, mm -hmm. The Magical Abode and, and The Silver Cross on Emerald Island, which Emerald, in which Emerald Island is actually Boracay Island. I've been to Boracay. And I published two travelogue essays in the same magazine entitled The Gypsy Woman of Acuna, the birthplace of the Chilean Nobel laureate in poetry, Gabriela Mistral, right, yeah. and then the uh, historical treasures of Mexico, Latin American Odyssey about Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, 
Oh, okay. And about the in, in, in Guanajuato and about the Mexican Museum of Anthropology, mm -hmm. in which I compared them to the Taj Mahal and other historical sites in India that I visited. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was a was a, a, a short story, no, an essay, short essay that I sh showed you called the Tavern about the Queen. Right. Uh, Chile. I published another one called the Mystical Quest, a short story in um, in the Cathedral. Uh, wait, in, in the Cathedral Quest, the, the, the newsletter of the Cathedral of St. Mary and St. John's, the Cathedral, the, the, the Anglican, Filipino Anglican Cathedral of Metro Manila at St. Luke's Hospital. I, I, I published another newsletter, um, <coughs> poetry, uh, such uh, in, in the same in the, in the Cathedral Quest, also um, in the Philippine Free Press. I published two poems in the Philippine Free Press, and I published in Amnesty International Filipinas newsletter, and in the former journal, or the former nurse newsletter, cultural and scientific and philosophical newsletter of the Order of the Naga Brahmas, a, a, a school of mystical thought, a mystical school. And, um, yeah, those are more or less the journals, newsletters. So do you think you're going to stay here? I don't know. One thing I know, I I cannot leave until I finish my PhD. If you did decide to stay here, would you stay in Quezon City or would you move to the province? Maybe I'd like to move to the province but still be connected to it. Yeah. Which is possible. I might stay here if I could get involved in writing projects, but ultimately I think I would like to get out of here and go go to Latin America and live in Chile, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's undecided. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure yet. So, how long did it take you to get your ACR? I got it in a year. I'm a lawyer. Wow, it's a long time. Well, I got it in October. Of did did, and you're not married to a Filipina, so that's probably why it took. No, I got my wait. Uh, student visa. <laughs> no, I got the I got the student visa, but the ACR took me longer. Huh, interesting. Was there any problems that you were not married, that you got your ACR? No, no, I, I did it through a lawyer. I had money I, in, as an investor. Right. Hmm. So what other uh, interesting incidents has happened to you since you've been here? Um, Is it mostly, most of your incidents has been with women? Romance? Yeah, and I've been swindled. Uh huh. By my girlfriends and by at least one publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been involved in grassroots stuff with the Institute for the Study of Asian Church and Culture, with Amnesty International Filipinas. Um, but I, I'm now trying to focus more on my dissertation. Cool. Because they gave me an extension until June, and I I'm really pressured I must finish it. And then you're not sure if you're going to stay or not? I just don't know. It's you up in the air. I just don't know. I'm very homesick for the States. I don't know why. Yeah. I always said, if I found a place abroad, I wouldn't really care. But it's amazing that home is home, and you can't really deny that. I really have nostalgia to go back, mm -hmm. especially to experience the autumn, mm -hmm. I experience the Washington, D.C. And my fond memories of visiting my colleague Nina Myers, who taught with me in Mexico, uh, English at the Mexican Methodist Social Center, Centro McDonald in Durango, Durango, to her place in the Alleghenies mm -hmm. Mountains in Randolph, really beautiful. Although I don't know if she's still living. Her son, probably. Yeah, right. Uh, Clark is still living. So if you decided to move to a province, what province would you not live in? Maybe uh, Ampanga or maybe uh, Pangasinan, but I don't know. I would, yeah. have to, I would have to study it, the situation very carefully. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to make a decision unless I really, really research it well. Right, right. So. Would you consider a remote province, maybe like in uh, Virac, Kandanoanas, or something like that? I just that? don't know. I'd have to find out. 
Yeah. But I want to be a place where I'm, I'm physically secure. Oh yeah, that's no problem. You know where, where it's fairly peaceful. Yeah. I don't want to be in, in the middle where there's an insurgency where I might get kidnapped or something like that. Tell me about your story with the uh, Al Qaeda guy. He suspected of being Al Qaeda. He was under surveillance. Uh huh. I filed a case against him for why threatening to kick me out of the TV room because I was showing emotion over the terror attack on the World Trade Center that was showing. And being, since he is a fundamentalist, uh, mm. political, religious fundamentalist extremist. Mm. He threatened to have the guards throw me out, and I reacted back from my head. He even threatened to have me thrown out of the international center. Did he physically attack you? No, no, you? no, he wouldn't dare do that. But I filed a case against him upon the advice of Jessica Soda, the executive director of Amnesty International mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And then we had a hearing at the, the na national headquarters right here, the Commission on Human Rights, in the chapel in which I demanded an apology, a statement against terrorism, and promised he wouldn't do it again. He refused all of that. And we were supposed to have another hearing, and the investigator, Agape Dolores, said I had a case. But then they decided later on, he, that he and the lawyer, one of the lawyers, that I had no merit, although he said in the end of the hearing to my ex-girlfriend that I did have a hearing. I did have a, there was a basis. I mean, it did have a case. Mm hmm Exactly. And actually, I, I have appealed it, but they, they never answered it, which is typical in the, in, in, in ineptness, incompetence, and corruption in these, in, in these bureaucracies. And right. I was told by a psychologist and professor here just to forget it and concentrate on my studies. So yeah. I, I think I made the right decision. Yeah, sometimes you can't linger on things like that. No, I mean, you know, and I, but did this happen right at 9/11 when that happened? Right after. Uh, right after. Well, right after it. Happened. Well, how, did, how did you feel about the 9/11 incident? <laughs> well, I think it was terrible, but basically these things had to happen before. Of course. They happened in our embassies in Tanzania. Uh huh. And wait a minute, Tanzania and uh, Uganda. Mm hmm. But they've been happening, and they've been happening anyway in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. and it's still going on. It isn't just 9/11 is it, it is something which illustrates it, but it's happening all over the world. Right. And it's more than just terrorism. It's a new movement of totalitarianism. Mm -hmm. It's genocide. It's extremism. It's, it's racial hatred. It's, it's re religious fanaticism. Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole bunch of vipers that are being let out of Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the U.S. may be partially responsible for what happened? I don't think anybody can then justify this terrorism and just say it's because of U.S. or because of that. Right. I mean, there's no excuse. excuse. Right. Of course, the root causes of terrorism, for, uh, it, you know, is poverty, is injustice, is inequality, and, and corruption, lack of education, lack, lack of health care lack of transparency, whatever, mm -hmm. but there's no justification for it. Have you ever read any books by Noam Chomsky? Yes, I have. I know his, his sister-in-law, Judy Chomsky. Oh, really? Yeah, I was involved with Philadelphia Resistance, an anti-imperialist and anti-war move, movement organization in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. uh, made up of mostly radical Jewish uh, intellectuals and who were graduates of the University of Pennsylvania, uh -huh. including Tony Abragon. That's where uh, Noam Chomsky graduated. No, 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 wait, he, he did his, wait a minute, he... he he's from the University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, but he? yeah, but he's a professor at MIT, right? Right, exactly. Had, I knew his sister, all Judy Chomsky, uh -huh. and then there was Tony Abragon and Lisa Schiller, a Jewish woman, and Candy Putter, a Quaker, mm -hmm. and uh, Greg Moore, a whole bunch of these people. I was involved with them after being working with a Quaker Action Group. These were all peace, peace and justice groups. Right. And uh, Tony Abergan later was a famous correspondent covering the con conflict in southern Africa regarding mm -hmm. apartheid and regarding the despotic regime of Idi Amin. And he marched into Uganda with the Uganda Liberation Forces and the Tanzanian Army 
to liberate the people of Uganda from the monstrous rule, despotic rule of Idi Amin, who was who, who recently died, right. and he wrote a book about it coming into Uganda. It's out of print now. Oh. And then he was based in Central America, reporting on the conflict, conflicts in Central America, specifically in Nicaragua and in El Salvador and in Guatemala. How do, you, how do you view terrorism in the Philippines? It's a problem. Mm -hmm. The where, government is, is making efforts against it, but it's a problem. And wh where does the worst problem lie? Huh? Where does the worst problem lie? What group? Would you say the NMLF the, or the NPA or who? I think all of them are engaging in this. Yeah. Is any of it justified? No, no, you cannot justify the killing of innocent men. Right. I mean, these are gangsters. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a thug mentality it's a thug of mentality. There's no way you can justify any of it. You have to be condemned with all the force of power. And I'm speaking, you know, someone who has been involved in the historic history of the Society of Friends, the Quakers, and the Mennonites, and and the Brethren in Christ churches that I've been involved with. Philosophically, do you think the NPA has any grounds? Are they really socialist? I just don't know. But I know one thing, the ends do not justify the means. And they go around killing innocent men, women, and children. Yeah, that's true, yeah. And there were the killing of, of whom they said were, were traitors uh, and other people, uh, in, the innocent men, women, and children, in massacres that were part of purges that the NPA oh, on the did. killing fields? Yeah, the killing fields. It's in Laguna. Like Luzon, but even worse, in Mindanao. Yeah. It was in the thousands of Mindanao, and at least in the hundreds in in, uh, in Luzon, maybe even more. I think that's uh, between uh, Los Banos and uh, San Pablo City. Yes. Yeah, actually, yeah. So, um, do you think there's any philosophical merit to uh, the moral liberation front? I think, you know, the inequality or the discrimination against ethno-linguistic Muslims is reasons why they've had, they've had these insurgencies. Mm -hmm. And these people are very, very proud. I know one of them. He's doing his PhD in environmental science, and as he said, nobody ever colonizes. We may we have, we have been attacked by foreign forces like the U.S., the British, the Dutch, um, the Spanish, but they could never subjugate us. Whereas they have been subjugated in other parts of the Philippines, but we we were never slaves, and that is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm running low bat, so I think, and we've got it about 30 minutes in, so I think that's fine. Is that, a, you want to say anything else? you have anything, anything else? You did great. It's a, it's a wrap. I'm with this guy legally as Esquire and attorney and all that crap, but I have to take him to court, and that don't make sense. Now the VA is a, is a messed up system. This assistant says it's for the veteran, so how can they don't represent the veteran in court? It's not for the veterans, because you have to hire your own lawyer. But people ain't too smart, they don't see. It's just a, it's a lot. More people in the VA is paid to deny so they have a job than the people who okay it. Let me ask you a question. How do you like living in the Philippines? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, you need a break. That's Gail oh, Norton. Okay. She's the Secretary of Interior. Oh yeah, from New Jersey. I did some work with the Indian Affairs for that. And she did a lot of good things for uh, AIDS patients too. Okay. And this is my buddy. Mr. Donald Rumsfeld, who I still have connection.
the Secretary of Defense. The same guy who shook Saddam Hussein when they were fighting the Iraqis, the Iranians, he's the same guy <laughs> back in office who destroyed him. <laughs> mm -hmm. You didn't know that? Yep. The same players back then went back in office in Washington and took out Iraq. I got one coming from the CIA director, but that ain't here yet. Right. See, whenever you do work for a government agency, they give you a picture. And this other shit doesn't matter. <coughs> These are cases that I had one on Filipino veterans. This one here. That's Humana. This one here is why Percy don't like me. <laughs> Remember this guy? They say he don't he don't have it, and I got it through the thing. I got copies of his medals and everything. The family received big money. This one here is to this case, which is now being closed. The secretary asked for an extension. When they ask for an extension in court, you, you know you got them by the ass. So mm -hmm. now. I send my clothes in tomorrow, which I hope my wife don't give me no crap, and this old lady will get her money. Okay? Cool. That's for this one. I like that. This one, one here, he died already. He was the first one I did at home. She <coughs> wrote his name Vecta. The U.S. government also tried to screw with him, and I got his thing. He gave me pictures and all that other sort of stuff. This one here can't get nothing. Now, this is the, the problem here in the Philippines. What they don't teach Filipinos. You've got three, different, three types of discharges. See, this is coming handy now when you sell it. Okay. You've got one scouts. You've got one Philippine Army. Now, for people inducted from Philippine Army to USAFE, they get this. It's called an affidavit proof serving on each ad. If you're just a Philippine Army, you are not covered by the VA. Oh. But if you have this, and with a WADDO24 induction book, the veteran gets it. And they don't tell these veterans up there, and they file this. Because the Philippines was an independent country, the only <coughs> had a jurisdiction of diplomatic affair in the banking system at that time. So they had to take care of their own people. Oh, okay. Say, hey, you want to read my closing? No. What's about you, Warren? What about me? Yeah. My wife tortures me. Oh, yeah, but the question is, do you like it? Yeah, I'm going to say this. I'm going to ask you this what it is. <laughs> <laughs> is there a hell? Yes, I live in it. So when I die, I don't go into heaven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This makes you have aircon, huh? Yeah, so you I'm already in hell. Will I return home? Yes, the VA is also on that thing for VA housing. They want me back in the States. Why, I can't disclose. And if this one, listen this time, she can get her little visa, which is still sitting up there. I'll tell you about that visa. You step aside, one want G to hear this. I go home. I go home when in 1992 cost me a lot of money to reinstate her visa. They sent her a letter to go to any consulate, consulate, and pick up visa. She didn't do it. When I was doing the Francisco case, I went downstairs. An American immigration officer wanted to talk to her and ask her why she's still here because she has a visa in there. Unfortunately, the world runs on money. And I pray to God, when I do this thing again, the witch, as her mother calls her, listens. Like G, listen. Like everybody else, listen. True? Yeah. Ask John why you didn't get your visa. Turn around. Because you're I interview. really don't have money anymore. I'm so desperate already that I may give you bullshit again. It's been ordered yeah. by court that you pick it up any consulate. G knows that. You could have went to Singapore. You could have went to Hong Kong. You could have went to, what, Cebu? You could have went to Davao. I'm just getting better lighting over here, so... Yeah, right? She could have went to Davao. There's a council office there in Cebu. The problem is, she listened to her family. That's her major downfall, which led to this nightmare. But, 
with G, even though she's a good debater, she listened to people. And she went by what she was told and she got the visa. To get anything, you've got to play the system. True? And you can't blame everybody when you screw up. Right, G? Not you, her. She always blames me for the loss of visa. She told me she didn't get her visa because she did not declare the number, the correct number of children. That's all it is. Then we went to court. It's just a matter of refiling. When I went to court, they I went to uh, Kennedy Plaza. It cost me two thousand dollars on this thing. My I didn't know nothing about federal law then. And the only thing that saved her for this thing, there's no law in the Philippines. So what law was broken? Okay, it goes back to INS in Vermont. They sent her a letter and sent me a copy. No need to file fiancé visa because all your wife has to do is pick up her visa any nearest American consulate. And she did not do it. Thus, when we have fights, the wife crucifies me because she's here. You did not pick up your visa? It's still sitting down there. <coughs> Why didn't you pick it up? It's approved. Yeah. Two thousand, like I said, I like in this on. case. Nearest council, where? Nearest council, you go with the Cebu. Don't go to this embassy. Yeah. Go somewhere else and get it, because it's on internet worldwide. <laughs> thing. Now, when I went to uh, this case. She's standing down there. I'm up here. I had to get some stuff for Senator Reed. I asked the first the Filipino lady, Run, Allen, out. Then the lady goes. Mr. Allen, what? Why are you here? Because I'm talking to you. No, seriously, why are you here? Your wife was got issued visa. American guy comes to the window. Where's your wife? Down there. Yes. Please come to the window. She don't go to the window. Why? That's the question everybody's asking her. She has a visa. All I do is refile it here and even if she, okay, she made a mistake, she did not state the correct number of children. But all she has to do is refine. It, already, it got no reinstated. Problem. It got reinstated. The court ordered it. Then they send a letter, pick it so up. So you can't counsel. blame Warren. No. You blame yourself. Because you, you were the one who lied. And also, all you have to do is refine. If you want, if you want it on your camera, I'll get the let copy of the letter. You want to copy the letter? No, that's okay. I want you. <laughs> Show us your injury. That why you deserve something. I can't show you. No. <laughs> the back. No, that's okay. Is it the back? Yes, perfect. You see that? No. Oh, you have the X-ray too. You yeah. know. Oh, the X-ray upstairs. Hey. I haven't took a bath yet, so... No, you don't care about taking a bath. See where it's perfect? Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. They ain't supposed to enlist you in the army like that. That's why it's on that call. Fraudulent enlistment. That's why... But I love my wife. People of the agency gave me money to go home. But I decided to stay with her and go through this torture to put her on a plane. Now, will she stay in the States? I don't know. Because most of them want to come home. But she shouldn't blame me every day. That's right. <laughs> you cannot blame one. I know I'm a son of a bitch. I know I'm arrogant. I know I'm egotistic. If I ain't these people, I can't do what I do. Everybody has their own personality. But don't blame me for something I didn't do. But is it true you were is it true you are with CIA? I will not say. Why? Why should I? Okay. John can say he's a CIA. Anybody can say they were CIA. But are you a CIA? I know, but... Well, CIA is easy. Civil Incorporated Assholes. Yeah, everybody's a member of that. <laughs> <laughs> Every politician's a member of that. You got anything to say to the bird? One more now. Come on, come on. You don't have nothing to say? This documentary will go in record on this day, on November 25th. Yep. Exactly, it should be 11.30. Mm -hmm. Close. That my wife, Janet A. Allen, for the first time in history, she had nothing to say. 
<laughs> now I find that fantastic. That I want a copy of this film. Hey, that video is for you, not for me, Hans. Just you are my wife. You are connected to me. You are my love and inspiration that brought me to Paradise Island. <laughs> this woman here told me she's not married, had no kids. I, I come home, she had a house full of kids since she was married. <laughs> Yes, love is blind and marriage is an eye opener. So this is your house? Do you live with your Lola here? This is a Bell's house who wants to sell it to me. Oh. Yeah. Again. <laughs> they all love me when they finally get moved up. So what did you do when you found out that she's married? That time? Nothing. We looked at <coughs> Mary wasn't registered. I love this place. So, she's free. And why don't you show me the outside of your house? What's it say? Oh, I don't know. I want to see where you see where, where you live. Is this, is this the typical I'll house? My, I'll show you my thinking room. Okay. Oh, do you get to sit in your thinking chair? This is a thinking room. <laughs> oh, okay. In here you do your thinking. If you get frustrated, you jerk off. <laughs> That's the American way. Yeah, you don't want to waste the load, right? Yeah. Good semen is hard to find. If you want a semen passport, just put in the passport and close it. Mm. What do I think about Jamboree? <laughs> that's not a that's not a that's not uh, a that's legitimate a good question. question. Who's Jamboree? Yeah, that's not a legitimate question. Jamboree on Sesame Street. I missed the big bird. <laughs> it's a good thing I can edit this. <laughs> you can't edit it. Yes, I can. Yeah, you can. I'm premier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah look at the, look at the yellow hair. Oh yeah. Actually, he's trying to copy that guy who was on Alec and Real, who's now playing on the agency, who died in Singapore. Oh, Eminem. Okay, what else you want to know? Uh, oh yeah, okay. Want to know another thing? Yes, I'm a certified writer. I made two records. I was asked by Nashville to make an album, which I have the letter upstairs. I gave it up for the Queen of Egypt. Set, set. Oh, Warren. I got hit in the face with the board, but I love it. Could you show us your punk dance again? Oh, that? Yeah. Your rap. Oh, come on. Okay. You like that? You didn't even like that, so. Come on, Bones. Are you dancing? Okay. Do the thing. <laughs> Yo, go get your mouth on the floor. Yo, yay, say it, quirk. That's what that little black guy, so. <laughs> <laughs>